San Antonio starts right now. Rise and shine. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, November 29th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a good week so far. Nice cool mornings and then really pretty yesterday in the afternoon, but I think we're going to start seeing some rain around here. Yes, changes are on the way as is bound to happen this time of year, Mike Oster H. Yes, indeed, and they kind of go all over the place as well. So yeah, yesterday was absolutely beautiful in the afternoon. We got up into the 60s as expected, just slightly below normal after that uh, kind of coolish cloudy start. And it's a uh, cool and cloudy out there as of right now and uh, not going to change all that much throughout the day. 52 degrees. It will still have very dry air in place with that dew point down to 38, but that'll be changing by later on today as well. And notice how we gain a handful of degrees. That's it. 10 below normal later on this afternoon across the board. As far as the aquifer is concerned, yesterday's reading went down three tenths of a foot. Allergens, mold and mountain cedar both still on the uh, the low side. Need another one of those big strong fronts to come on through here with the winds really uh, getting stirred up and not seeing anything as of yet that's really going to get those mountain cedar trees shaken up, which I don't think a lot of people are going to complain about. 43 right now, Kerrville, 42 comfort. Very chilly out there in the hill country and then and again, low 50s here in town. So this morning, cloudy, cool jacket, probably needed all day long. And a few showers are going to start to develop later on this afternoon. We only stay, as I said, in the upper 50s. Now tonight, the rain's going to start to pick up. And there will be a couple of uh, claps of thunder thrown in as well. And most of that, though, is going to be to the east. Things will really start to kind of get going in the morning hours. But again, primarily to the east. It will be a damp commute tomorrow, however. And also, some of those storms well off to the east may be on the strong side. We'll talk about that coming up. Then we're going to start to clear on out. We are going to be hitting 70 tomorrow, and that's the start of a warm period. What well, looks like through at least the middle of next week with high temperatures in the 70s. Not necessarily the what you'd think of for the first week in December, but that's what we have in store. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic authority hitting the roads right now. Mr. Cavazos, good morning, sir. What's going on? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, we are still watching some road work that should be wrapping up 410 at FM 78. And if you've been with us over the last few days, you know we've had our eyes on this particular stretch of town. So this is right there near Seguin Road, and you can see that crews are still out there. This work, again, should have wrapped up a little bit earlier this morning, but crews are seeing some sort of delay. I'll talk to our friends at Transguide to find out what exactly is the holdup, but for now, just be careful out there. We have this pinpointed at 410 southbound near FM 78, and you see a little bit of that buildup that is stretching behind me. Make sure to pack some patience and give those crews a break as they get the morning commute rolling. Giving you a wider view of the map, there's really not a lot else to show you this early. We have some other road work that is in the clearing stages, but for now, just pack some patience as your morning commute does get going because things aren't don't seem to be too bad, especially from that journey from Bernie along I-10 eastbound. Expect 26 minutes right here to the Alamo City. The same goes if you're traveling along 281 southbound heading in from Bolverde, so no need to hurry there. And it's not too awful from New Braunfels on I-35 southbound. 28 minutes for your drive time. But back here on Transguide, we'll keep a close eye on on that particular spot at 410 at FM 78. Remember, this is going southbound. One lane is blocked at this time, so we'll keep a close eye on it. But more road work on the way this week. I'll tell you where in the next few minutes. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. This morning, several San Antonio police officers are on administrative leave. That's after they shot a man last night on the city's south side, who the police chief says has an extensive criminal record. Now, Chief William McManus said the 47-year-old man is believed to be a suspect wanted for an aggravated assault that happened on Sunday on San Meyer Street on the east side that ended in a standoff. Police got information last night on where the man was and set up surveillance. Once he left in a car with three other people, Officers tried to make a traffic stop, and that's when police say that man waved a gun out the window from the back seat of the car. The car stopped at Interstate 35 South and Somerset Road, where the man ran into an open field. Reports are that he pointed the gun at officers who were in pursuit, and they wound up shooting at him. He was struck, transported to the hospital, and that's where we are right now. McManus added that six officers chased after him when the man pointed a gun at the officers. He says officers opened fire on the man, hitting him multiple times. That man was taken to the hospital in an unknown condition. None of the officers were hurt. Right now it's not clear how many of the six officers involved in the ch chase actually shot the man. They will be placed on administrative duty as per SAPD policy.
The San Antonio Fire Department says a man was killed in a house fire last night on the south side. It happened around 6.30 p.m. in the 1100 block of West Hutchins Place. As fire crews arrived, they found flames in the middle and the back of the house. The battalion chief says firefighters made entry into the home and found a man to believe to be in his late 20s. The battalion chief says they pulled him out of the house and that he shortly died after that. Crews were able to get the fire under control after part of the roof collapsed. The victim's death is still under investigation. This morning, one person is in the hospital. Their home destroyed in another fire. This one started just before 7 last night when a car in the garage exploded into flames on Ferris Creek and Vine Silver. John Paul Barajas has more from the scene. One person is injured. Her home is a total loss, and fire officials say a neighbor is the likely reason no one else was hurt. It's still dark out here right now, but now that the smoke is cleared, you can see the extent of the damages to this home, part of it even falling on the neighboring home there to the right. And now I want to show you video of the home actually collapsing on itself in real time. The top floor of the garage falling straight down. San Antonio fire officials believe the fire started because the homeowner pulled into his garage too fast and hit the water heater. We're told he only had some scratches on him. A spokesperson for the fire department says the man's neighbor ran outside and was able to pull him out of the car and to safety. Unfortunately, the man's wife was inside the home at that time. Fire officials tell us she has significant burns to her face, chest and arms. She was taken to the hospital. As for those neighbors, this was a massive and frightening scene. Oh, we thought, true. was there a bomb yeah. being dropped we on us? We like, didn't know. Yeah, we did. As he was walking out, the first explosion happened where everything shattered over here. And we we just dug down. And then as, as I started coming up again, then there was another explosion. Fire officials say they've already determined this home is a total loss, but they're still trying to figure out if they're going to have to demolish it or not. But city crews have already brought out some small construction equipment. But again, they're still trying to determine if they'll have to demolish it or not. John Paul Barajas. Kisa, 12 News. New this morning, at least one person is dead after a U.S. military Osprey aircraft crashed off the coast of southern Japan earlier today. A total of eight people were believed to be on board when it crashed just before 3 p.m. Japan time. According to their Coast Guard, a patrol boat and aircraft were sent to the scene. Numerous Osprey crashes have been reported over the years, including one in August when three U.S. Marines were killed and several others were injured during military exercises in Australia. Today, Rosalind Carter is set to receive her final accolades and farewells in Plains, Georgia. It's the same town where the former First Lady was born. There, she and former President Jimmy Carter based his 1976 presidential campaign and returned after their White House years as they became global humanitarians. Rosalind Carter died November 19th. Her funeral today will be held at Marana excuse me, Maranatha Baptist Church. The service comes on the last of three days of public tributes. The 99-year-old former president attended a memorial service yesterday in Atlanta. Now to the Middle East, where a two-day ceasefire extension between Israel and Hamas militants is set to expire today. On Tuesday, Hamas released 12 more hostages taken from Israel, and Israel turned over 30 imprisoned Palestinians. Now, as ABC's Justin Finch reports, the U.S. and the world are watching to see if another extension will follow. This morning, more hostages reuniting with loved ones in Israel. Hamas gunmen handing over 12 hostages taken from Israel to the Red Cross, including 17-year-old Mia Leinberg seen cradling her dog, both surviving more than 50 days held captive. Mia later seen embracing her mother, who was also kidnapped. So far, Hamas has released only one American, but the U.S. believes nine more remain in captivity. No word on where they are or who is holding them. CIA Director Bill Burns now in Qatar pushing for their release and all remaining hostages. The White House saying there's no indication Americans are being held for leverage. There's no indication that Hamas is trying to... Uh, to play some sort of game here in terms of the, the Americans. We can't just assume that uh, Hamas has ready access to everybody in a moment's notice. Across Israel, families of more than 100 hostages awaiting word on their loved ones. Yifat Zeiler Paz telling ABC's Matt Gutman she's hopeful for the release of her three cousins, a mother kidnapped with her two young children. Do you know what you're going to tell her? How much I love her. I think it go, it's going to be hard to let go for a minute there. Israel releasing 30 imprisoned Palestinians Tuesday, but across the ravaged Gaza Strip, concern about a deepening humanitarian crisis. 
The White House says the U.S. flew in more than 54,000 pounds of medical and food aid this week, with more to follow. Once the war with Hamas resumes, the U.S. is urging Israel to prioritize civilian safety and ensure more aid gets to Gaza, where millions are now believed displaced. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Looking ahead, it's the season for shopping, and that means thieves are going to take every opportunity to get money out of your wallet and bank account. Today at 2 p.m., we'll have a KSAT live stream community town hall talking about to experts about how to protect yourself from financial scams, among other things. You'll hear why younger people are more likely to become victims. And many of you have sent us questions for our upcoming town hall event on fertility hosted by our Stefania Jimenez. A fertility doctor and a therapist will join us live to give you advice about fertility and pregnancy loss. This is a safe space for us to have a conversation about topics that usually are not openly discussed and we're trying to change that. We invite you to watch Don't Suffer in Silence. It airs live this Thursday at 7 p.m. on our website and YouTube page. You can also catch it on all of our streaming platforms. Time now, 511, 52 degrees. Just ahead, how IKEA is offering to help protect your home for less than $10. And coming up in your GMA first look, something about Christmas. <laughs> Let's look out there with live cam. Starting off cool, not as cool as yesterday, and expecting some changes with rain. We'll be checking in for all those details coming up. Welcome back. It's 514. A TikTok video showing praying mantis babies on a family's fresh cut Christmas tree has gone viral and the tree owner is speaking out. ABC's Rihanna and Alley has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, it's the Christmas tree video blowing up TikTok. It's the most wonderful time. Andrea Coward and her family cut down their own tree at a tree farm. And two weeks later, they got a surprise. There was all these little bugs everywhere. They were little baby praying mantises. They develop over the course of a few weeks and then surprise. Though the video was shot in 2018, the new post about it is lighting up the internet with over 4.7 million views and counting. And this morning, the woman behind that video is telling her story to GMA. Just wanted to bring awareness to what could be in your tree. So are unwanted guests in fresh Christmas trees really something we have to worry about? We'll have what you need to know coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. Yuck. Can you imagine like an SNL skit, though? It's like praying mantis, and then they have their own manger for bed, you know, bed. <laughs> For, for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Praying, well, praying, praying mantises, praying. right? Right, Mike? Okay. Mike. <laughs> I said it was a skid. That's why I don't work for SNL. 515, 52 degrees. We'll see it. Just ahead on GMSA, we're checking out Amazon's next generation Alexa connected Echo Frames smart glasses. How you can get a hold of Microsoft's fun new ugly Christmas sweater. a better postal service for more on-time deliveries and easier affordable ways to ship so you can deliver even more holiday joy the united states postal service delivering for america ah mornings cough congestion i'm feeling better all in one and done with new mucinex kickstart <laughs> Headache? Better now. New Mucinex Kickstart gives all-in-one and done relief with a morning jolt of instant cooling sensation. It's comeback season. Want luxury hair repair that doesn't cost $50? Pantene's Pro Vitamin Formula repairs hair as well as the leading luxury bonding treatment for softness and resilience without the price tag. If you know, you know it's Pantene. Well, if this is the time of year. There's allergens. There's yeah. bugs going around. They can knock you down for a yeah. day, day or two. Yeah, I was. I was just telling you guys uh, before the, the uh, during the break that I was not feeling great yesterday. The allergies were getting to me, mm -hmm. uh, been all over the place, and uh, thankfully feeling a lot better today. Good. But I'm not feeling too great about this traffic. Uh -oh. Yeah, yeah those flashing lights. 
Guys, uh, be on the lookout here. This is a shot we have showed you over the last few days. 410 at FM 78. Road work continues out there. I did talk to our friends over at Transguide, and right now it's not clear exactly how long crews are going to be out there, but I would say it's safe to just maybe plan for a different route. Crews have uh, likely are going to be seeing some sort of delay, but uh, if you are heading out in that direction, you could get caught in that delay as well. Let's take you to our map and show you a little bit of that buildup. Nothing too drastic yet because it is still pretty early in the morning. 410 at FM 78. The southbound lanes, we have that lane closure out there. So because there's not a lot of traffic, we're not seeing a huge uh, backup there just yet. But I'll keep a close eye on that. Now, the wider view of the map, thankfully, no other issues to report, but things to plan for later this morning. We do have some curb and sidewalk construction that will continue along FM 1535. We know it as Northwest Military Highway. That work started on Monday and will take us all the way to the first day of December. That's Friday, 7 in the morning to 6 in the evening. Make sure to plan ahead because it's during that time we will see alternating lane closures in both directions from Loop 1604 to Hebner Road. I want to see if we can get that QR code up because I just updated the list of closures on our website at ksat.com slash traffic. TxDOT has updated their information, so we want to bring that to you. Scan that QR code, get in the know before you have to go, Mike. Thank you, sir. Beautiful moon is just a couple of days past full, so technically a waning gibbous moon. And look at that nice hole in the clouds right there in Lavernia and the moon rising. Gorgeous shot. Thank you very much for that. All right. We're not going to be seeing any great sunrises or something sets today because clouds are here and they're going to be sticking around. And throughout the course of the afternoon, this is going into four o'clock this afternoon. And even prior to that, there may be a, a couple of sprinkles trying to develop here, but this is what the computer model is uh, trying to, to pick up and develop. And this is going to be the case in toward dinner time. And then as we go into the nighttime hours, a few more of these showers that kind of kind of spreads a little bit and a little more aerial coverage. And this is going to be the situation then later on tonight, overnight into the wee hours of the morning. And there may actually be a couple of claps of thunder here and there. And so this time tomorrow morning, right around morning commute, we will have a couple of showers around the area. So just count on it being a damp commute tomorrow. We'll have some showers overnight, so the roads will be damp. There may be some rain or even in the morning hours, but also things are going to start to get going off here to the east. And we'll have a few more thunderstorms off to the east. Again, a couple of rumbles here, but again, the majority of everything that is going to really start to make it take notice is going to be in some of our eastern and northeastern counties. That rain's going to come to an end, and I think we'll see even some sunshine by the afternoon tomorrow. Storm Prediction Center still has the very small chance for, well, an isolated strong storm, maybe Austin, uh, San Marcos, and perhaps over toward Gonzales in our extreme eastern counties, but the best chance of anything strong to severe. And they've actually upped this to a three on a scale of one to five off to the east of us, so a better chance for a strong to potentially severe storms. And the way the atmosphere is set up, it would be high winds and hail, but also some isolated tornadoes to spin up is a possibility well off to the east. And along with that, obviously the heaviest rain is going to be off there to the east of us here in town. We're looking at maybe quarter of an inch of rain, lesser amounts in portions of the hill country, and that's going to be the situation overnight tonight and into tomorrow. Once again, today temperatures just are not going anywhere. Lots of clouds. Then we'll have those few little isolated showers some light rain couple of sprinkles trying to develop later on this afternoon. So the forecast goes like this again, 58 today, not much of a change in temperatures from where they are right now, a handful of degrees, 10 below normal. And then we'll start to see some of those showers more overnight tonight and tomorrow. A couple of rumbles of thunder here and there, but the majority of everything is going to be well off to the east of us. Obviously, we're going to be uh, kind of keeping an eye on things overnight and tomorrow morning, 70 tomorrow. And that's the start of a warm period going through at least the middle of next week. So the first weekend of December, it's going to be nice. It's going to be warm, though. Temperatures are good, 5, 7, 8 degrees above normal across the board. San Antonio, December weather. Exactly. <laughs> like I said earlier in the week, it's coats and then shorts this weekend. So OK, thank you. Mike. 524, 52 degrees. Look at your winning lot of numbers. Pick 3, 3, 5, 3, Fireball 6. Daily 4, 0, 9, 0, 5, Fireball 6. Cash five numbers 5, 6, 12, 26, 28, and Mega Millions 27, 37, 42, 59, 61, Mega Ball 11, Mega Plier 3. 
527, IKEA is introducing three new smart home centers that will protect your home and won't break the bank. ABC's Andrew Dembert has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, new offerings from IKEA. The Swedish retailer has introduced three smart home sensors, all less than $10. They monitor doors, windows, and your property. One even senses water leaks. They're expected to be available next year. Amazon's latest line of Alexa-powered eyewear is available for pre-order. The third-generation Echo frames are lighter with better battery life and speakers. You can use the glasses to turn on the lights, play your favorite music, or call your mom. They come in seven styles. Start at under $200. Finally, this year's Microsoft Ugly Christmas Sweater is a recreation of the Windows XP default background from the early 2000s. They're selling fast, though, through the Xbox Store for about $70. Proceeds will go to support an environmental group. Can't decide if I want this sweater. It seems I don't like to nitpick. Those are your tech bites. Hey, Andrew. Okay. Yeah. 528, 52 degrees. Which popular prescription medication works best for weight loss? Up next, what a new study found. And ahead on GMSA at 6 today. It's no secret that men and women handle stress differently. Why that could mean more serious heart problems for women. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday, the 29th of November. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a good week so far. Uh, everybody's week going good? Yeah, yeah. pretty yeah. good. <laughs> Like nice yours cool. is better. <laughs> yeah, 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 better after being sick uh, yesterday, but uh, a lot better. A lot it's better nice to have cool mornings. Yesterday was absolutely yeah. beautiful in the afternoon. I uh, hope you liked it because it's not going to be the case today. Yeah. So, but then uh, we're going to have a lot more sunshine later on in the forecast. And there you can see over there by 10, 4, 10, all those clouds hanging around and temperatures. Yeah, it is grab a coat. It's not. It's not bone chilling cold out there, but you know, 52 degrees. It's yeah, it's cool enough. We still have relatively dry air. Still 14 degrees difference between these two numbers. Um, that's going to be changing though with the humidity coming up later on today. Those dew points will be coming up, and that's going to help out with some of the uh, some of the rain around here. But with that dry air, and you saw no wind to speak of, we could have gotten a lot cooler this morning. But we've got that blanket of clouds on top of us. It is 10 degrees cooler on average out there in portions of the hill country. But low 50s throughout most of the metropolitan area, upper 40s, low 50s. Mold, Mountain Cedar, both on the low side. And throughout the rest of today, not much really changes. We're only going to make it up to 58 for a high temperature later on this afternoon. Kind of like what we had on Monday and lots of clouds hanging around here. Plus, a couple of showers are going to be developing later on this afternoon. Just a little, you know, the humidity starts to come up. A few of those little sprinkles here and there. A couple more than later on tonight and then especially overnight. Now, we're going to talk about rain chances into tomorrow morning. I count on a wet commute com tomorrow and also a few claps of thunder, but we're going to have to also be on the lookout off to the east for some strong to potentially severe storms pretty much out of our area, but we'll uh, take a closer look at that and a closer look at the weekend forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, I saw a bunch of flashing lights. Yep. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Mike. Well, we are still watching that area off of 410 at FM 78. We have crews that are still out there with one lane that is open. We'll show you that shot in just a minute, but right now let's take a look around town. 281 at Hildebrandt, slow down before you approach that curb. Things are looking pretty fine out there. 281 at 410. If you're heading to the airport, no delays to report just yet. So a lot of these trans guide cameras aren't showing a lot of traffic, just a lot of the pavement, which is what we like to see. But one of the spots that we have continued to keep a very close eye on is the spot that Mike mentioned off of 410 at FM 78. So let's go and see if we can get that shot up there for you because it doesn't look like crews are wrapping anytime soon. In fact, at this time, uh, it does look like we have a little bit more activity out there. So let's just get you to our map to find out what the delay looks like. We know that we're down to one lane as we bring you right in with our map. Again, uh, the buildup doesn't look too bad as you approach that curve there at FM 78. So just make sure you pack your patience may want to exit early. I did talk to our friends at Transguide earlier this morning, and it doesn't appear that we have a time frame as, as exactly when these crews are going to wrap up, but we will watch that closely and give you those updates right here on GMSA. Quick look at your travel times. If you are heading into San Antonio this early in the morning, it's green from Seguin along I-10 westbound, 31 minutes. And right now, 33 along 87 northbound if you're heading in from Lavernia. And for our friends down in Floresville, should be about a 30-minute commute. But we'll keep a close eye on our roadways. Our friends at Transguide panning out to give us a bigger view of the scene out there. We'll watch the, the roads closely, and I'll have another update a little bit later on. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. 
A woman is waking up in a hospital this morning after what may have seemed like a nightmare. She suffered burns when her home suddenly exploded into flames. Our Katrina Weber is live in a neighborhood off of Braun Road near Loop 1604 on a street called Ferris Creek. And Katrina, we understand the fire started from a car that ran into a water heater inside that garage. Yeah, that's what firefighters tell us uh, their investigation shows so far. They say that it was a man who was driving, entering the garage of this home a bit too fast and hit the water heater. Suddenly, everything exploded. Now, this is what is left. You can see a pile of rubble, that home completely gone. Uh, police uh, firefighters tell us that it also had threatened, the fire had threatened for a while the house next door. I want to give you a look at the video from last night. This started right before 7 o'clock last night. Uh, firefighters had a tough time uh, with the flames. They were trying to keep them from spreading to the homes next door. They were successful in doing that. However, this house collapsed under the heat. Part of it did hit one of the homes uh, just next to it, causing some damage, we understand. The woman who was injured was inside the house at the time. She was taken to a hospital with burns on her hands, face, and body. And uh, firefighters told us she did have some pretty serious burns as a result of this. Now, they're still trying to uh, figure out all the mechanics as to how that explosion happened. But again, they say a car being driven by a man too quickly into the garage hit the water heater and then exploded. Loaded. That part of it's still under investigation, and we also hope to have an update on the woman's condition a little bit later on today. Reporting live on the far west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. We now know the names of three people from San Antonio who were killed in a plane crash in West Texas over the weekend. The Irian County coroner identified the victims as Jeremy Allen Sanchez, Elise Marie Sanchez, and Katrina Sanchez. The crash happened around 6.30 Saturday night near Mertzen. That's about 30 miles southwest of San Angelo. The National Transportation Safety Board is investigating. A former teacher's assistant at Johnson High School is wanted on a warrant for felony child grooming. Northeast ISD police say she sent explicit photos and videos of herself to a teenage student at the school. Now, according to paperwork viewed by KSED, investigates 23-year-old Daniela Franco told investigators she was flirting with the student through the social media app Snapchat. Investigators say Franco also sent messages to the student intended to solicit him to engage in sexual acts with her. A student was 16 when those messages were sent. Franco resigned back in October and an arrest warrant was issued for her two weeks ago. A spokesperson for the Bear County Sheriff's Office says law enforcement believes Franco is avoiding law enforcement. So if you've seen her or know where she could be, you are asked to call the Bear County Sheriff's Office. 537 now to the race for president. What many political pundits call the race for second place in the Republican primary. Nikki Haley is getting a new boost as Ron DeSantis prepares for a highly unusual debate with a Democrat. ABC's Lionel Moyes explains how former President Trump is still ahead in some polls even after skipping the debates. This morning, a boost for former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley in her quest for the White House. In every poll, we are beat Biden by 10 to 13 points. AFP, the political advocacy group founded by the billionaire Koch brothers, is throwing its support behind Haley. We are now in second place in Iowa, second place in New Hampshire, and second place in South Carolina. We just have one more fellow we got to catch up to. The group already raising $70 million, insisting Haley would boost Republican candidates up and down the ballot, winning the key independent and moderate voters that Trump has no chance to win. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis downplaying the endorsement, claiming AFP represents the establishment. All I can say is uh, we have got to go into Washington and make big changes. You don't want to go into Washington and just continue business as usual. Meanwhile, DeSantis is preparing to square off against California Governor Gavin Newsom tomorrow night in a one-on-one -on -one debate expected to dive into issues like the economy, immigration, and crime without a live audience. But many observers are asking, will it matter? Former President Trump is 40 points ahead in some polls, even after skipping the debates and even while facing multiple criminal cases. His actions after January 6th are once again in the spotlight. CNN has released excerpts from former Congresswoman Liz Cheney's 
upcoming memoir, Oath and Honor, in which she claims one GOP lawmaker, during efforts to contest the 2020 election results, said, the things we do for the orange Jesus, referring to Trump. Going back to that Nikki Haley endorsement by AFP, the group says it has never engaged in a presidential election before, but wants to, quote, turn the page on the past. That's to make sure President Biden and former President Trump do not return to the White House. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. 540, 53 degrees. If you're planning to get your true love gifts, like five golden rings, I'm not gonna go do all of them. Four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge and a pear tree, sorry. Can't do that, Darty. We're gonna tell you how much more you'll have to spend this year to make the holiday classic come true. That should have been Mark's read. <laughs> Outside with live camp right now, it's uh, milder this morning overall. We have some uh, mid-level clouds out there right now and rain is in Mike's extended forecast. We'll talk about when that could happen this week coming up. Welcome back. It's 543 in your morning consumer headlines. A large study found that users of the diabetes drug Manjaro lost more weight and were more likely to meet specific weight loss targets than those using a competitor, Ozempic. The drugs are prescribed to treat type 2 diabetes, but they've gained new popularity because they may also help people lose substantial amounts of weight. Now, the study looked at 18,000 people taking the drugs in the real world. Novo Nordisk, the company that makes Ozempic for diabetes in a higher dose version under a different name for weight loss, said the study it's not a fair comparison. Okay, here we go. This year, the cost of the gifts of 12 days of Christmas is hitting a record high. According to PNC Christmas Price Guide, the total amount of the True Love's gifts featured in the classic Christmas Carol, the 12 days of Christmas, has increased to a little more than $46,000 this year. But some costs remain the same. Those include the cost of four, calling birds, five, gold yeah. rings, seven, sons of swimming, eight, maids of milking, and nine, ladies dancing. <laughs> period on the sentence. <laughs> Meanwhile, the pear tree will cost 15% more this year, but at least the price of the actual, par actual partridge, which is kind of a large quail, did not change. And that's the best I can do at 5.44 in the morning. The partridge didn't change, okay. Yeah. Because that's what I wanted for Christmas. I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Working on it. <laughs> we are. 545, 53 degrees. Let's look out there with TransSky looking at I-10 at Provent. Things are moving. Good news there. Uh, looking off to the side, still flashing lights off of Loop 410, but I'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos after the break. All right, 548, let's get a look at the hold up there at 410 at FM 78. This is what we weren't hoping to see here. The traffic that is slowing down tremendously this early in the morning. This is due to some of the work that's been taking place out there. Again, I've talked to our friends at TransGuide. No exact time frame as to when we're going to see this wrap up, but I'll keep a close eye on this. One of the areas that we're going to start to see that buildup is in the southbound lanes of 410, where that lane closure has led to that backup. So pack your patience if you have to head through the area and just make sure to look for an alternative route. Now, the wider view of the map, thankfully, it's still pretty quiet, but we're getting closer to 6 a.m., so that you know what that means. We'll see a lot more activity out on the roadways, including more construction. US 90 over on the west side of San Antonio, we have overhead work that will begin around 9 this morning. This takes us up to Friday, December 22nd, so this will be going on for quite some time. Remember, this will end at 3 in the afternoon, but during that time, we will see turnaround closures in both directions under the Leon Creek Bridge, so just know what to expect before you have to travel in that direction. That could slow you down, but we know that traffic is definitely slowing down here at 410 at FM 78. Remember, southbound lanes, uh, not a good area to travel through right now, but if we see this holdup uh, lasting any little bit longer, mm -hmm. this could lead to bigger delays, which is something that we don't want to see, especially as we get closer to morning rush. Okay. Thanks, yeah. Stephen. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, who would like to run away with the circus? So cool picture though out by uh, Nelson Wolf Stadium at Circus oh, Soleil, yeah. which has oh, their wow. tent set up up there. Yeah. And the clouds, I mean, what a gorgeous, gorgeous picture. I would imagine this was from a couple of days ago. We didn't have a whole lot of clouds yeah. yesterday, late in the day with the, uh, the sunset, pretty. but yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty. Yeah. Circus in town through Sunday, I think, so. Pretty cool show and it, under the big top. But yeah, that's a neat looking picture. And I love the the orangey red with the blue and white stripes in front of it there. So thank you very much for the case at Connect picture. All right. Clouds right now all day long. Not going to see any change as far as sky conditions are concerned. Right, here's, you know, the dew point. This, I kind of call it the measure moisture in the atmosphere, if you will. Um, it's going to be doing a little bit of a roller coaster action. It's 
pretty dry right now, but dew point temperature is going to be coming up tomorrow. Then we get somewhat of a front. I, it, I hate to put it even use the word front. Uh, this is just going to be sort of some drier air coming in here because temperatures really aren't going to be doing anything with these fronts, but that's going to dry the air out for Friday. That somewhat of a front that dry can't even call it really a dry line coming on through here uh, over the weekend. Not bad as far as humidity is concerned, although in the mornings with temperatures dropping in the 50s and dew points in the 40s, I mean, you'll, you'll kind of feel somewhat of that, but it's not going to be oppressively humid like uh, in the overnight hours. And then we have another front moving on through here, and that's going to dry things out again. But we're not looking at any big blasts of colder air coming on in here with associated with any of these fronts. Now today, like I said, there's nothing changing throughout the day. Clouds all day long. We'll make it up to the mid 50s by noon and top off at 58, 10 degrees below normal on average around the area. And a little bit of light rain is going to try and develop later on this afternoon, which is what computer models are indicating. So we get the humidity coming back on in here and then a few of those little sprinkly showers. And as we go on in through the evening hours, notice how there's a few more of them, maybe even a, a little thunderstorm here or there. That's the situa situation later on tonight, and we're not looking at a whole bunch of rain, especially in portions of the hill country. Overnight, aerial coverage continues to sort of fill in, and then by tomorrow, we'll have a damp commute tomorrow. So just kind of count on that and have some rain overnight, so the roads are definitely going to be wet. And we'll start to see uh, in the morning hours more storms firing up, especially off to the east, and those will continue to work their way off to the east, and that's where the chance for anything strong to severe is going to be taking place. Now, Storm Prediction Center does have our extreme uh, eastern counties included in the very isolated chance for a severe storm. High winds and hail, even an isolated tornado or two can't be ruled out with this, but the majority of this is definitely going to be well off to the uh, east of us. And I was talking about rain. Well, a quarter inch here in town, uh, maybe a couple of isolated spots a little bit more than that. Not that much in portions of the hill country and obviously the lion's share is going to be well off to the east of us and that's going to be through tomorrow and then by early mid afternoon is when all that rain continues to work its way off to the east. So again 58 today then 70 tomorrow. So that's the start of the big warming trend 74 on Friday. Um, we're going to have a warm period all the way through the weekend. And I know Sunday morning you're going to be getting up early yes. to do a little <laughs> running through the streets of San Antonio. So starting off 55 degrees in the morning, okay. you know, a hint, it's not going to be humid, but a little, little bit of it out there. And then sure. temperatures will make it up into right around 70 by noon. No heavy jackets this year. No, but that's <laughs> not, you don't really like that kind of running weather, do you? No, but at least it's not going to hit 90 right. later. And that's good news for the people actually running the full. I'm doing the half, so I'll be finished a lot they're, earlier. They're talking about the rock and roll marathon. <laughs> yeah. So do you start at 7, you'll be done by, what, 8.30? Well, I probably, <laughs> no. <laughs> I wish. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Probably, uh, closer to 9. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, though. 553, 53 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick 3, 353, three, Fireball 6. Daily 4, 0, 9, 0, 5, Fireball 6. Cash 5, 5, 6, 12, 26, 28, and Mega Millions 27, 37, 42, 59, 61, Mega Ball 11, Mega Plier 3. From now through December 12th, you can donate a pair of new shoes or socks to the Share the Shoes campaign. It's through the organization Zapatos. You can drop off those donations at any of the seven SAPD substations. They need shoes and socks for all sizes and ages, toddlers to adult. We have all this information on ksat.com. Time is running out to help the San Antonio Zoo's uh, holiday experience. The zoo has been nominated for USA Today Reader's Choice Award. It's nominated for Best Zoo Lights. Last day of voting is today. If you'd like to vote, there's a link to this article on ksat.com. Well, coming up, San Antonio police say a man who was shot by officers had an extensive criminal record. How it all unfolded last night. And up next, we're checking out the scene of a devastating fire on the northwest side that started when a water heater exploded. Look at the damage that was done there. And checking Trans Guide, we've got eyes on this incident at 410 and FM 78. That's Farm to Market Road 78. Stephen Cavazos is tracking that. Be right back. Hi, good morning. We are starting off 
cool in the 50s this morning. Not as cool as yesterday, but still need a jacket when you head out there. We're gonna check in with Mike very soon to see what you can expect for the rest of your day. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is 6 a.m. on your Wednesday, November 29th. Happy Wednesday. Thank you for joining us. Uh, actually, we made it to Wednesday. I know a lot of people were coming off a break, and mm -hmm. so maybe this week's been a little hard for you, but uh, we're going to have some changes in the weather. And it's been on the cool side for a lot of folks. Uh, you know, 50s can even be chilly to a lot of South Texans and San Antonians. So the warming trend is going to begin. Yes, not today, though, because yesterday, of course, we had a lot of sunshine mm -hmm. today. A lot of clouds, so mm -hmm. even though there's only going to be four degrees difference between the high yesterday and the high today, boy, that cloud cover makes a whole big, big difference out there. So yeah, keep a jacket handy all day long and plenty of clouds out there as of right now. Well, that either everybody stopped on the highway or that picture froze. I think it's the latter of that. The picture froze <laughs> 53 right now and we have 43 in Kerrville Comfort, 48 in Bandera and also uh, 49 right now in Uvalde. Mold and uh, Mountain Cedar are both on the low side. The update account is going to be coming out about 730 or so this morning and throughout the rest of today. Like I said, nothing really changes. Clouds all day long. Temperatures are hardly going to be going up from where we are right now. A handful of degrees basically make it up to 55 at noon and then a high temperature makes it up to 58 and again cloudy with a couple of little sprinkles, patchy drizzle developing and then more rain is going to start to to cover more of the area later on tonight overnight into tomorrow. A couple of claps of thunder as well. We're going to have to watch and be on the lookout for some strong to severe storms, but most of those are going to be primarily well off to the east tomorrow. In behind that, that's when the warming trend starts. How warm is going to be this weekend? Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, I keep seeing a bunch of mm. different flashing lights all around. What's going on? Flashing lights, and then we're seeing those tail lights as well, Mike. We do have some road work that has slowed folks down along a 410 at FM 78. We'll show you that shot in just a moment. Quick look around town, though. Things are picking up as we get the commute rolling, but right there is the issue that we have this morning. It's construction, and as we talked to our friends at TransGuide this morning, no time frame as to when that will wrap up. We do know traffic is down to just one lane, so that's why we see this ugly color of orange out there. That indicates we have that backup, so in the southbound lanes, just be prepared for some slowdowns, but I would suggest find that alternative route if you can. Now, the wider view of the map, thankfully, it's still pretty quiet out there. I'm not seeing any big issues that would slow you down. If you're heading into San Antonio, quick look at those travel times. There right now, it's still pretty pleasant from Pleasanton along I-37 northbound. We have 29 minutes, 28 along US-90 eastbound. If you are heading in from Cal Astroville, and that arrival from Lytle should take you about 17 minutes along I-35 northbound. But right now, we know that the slowdowns will remain here at 410 FM 78 for a little bit longer. I'm going to continue to watch the area very closely, but again, no word yet as to when this will actually wrap up. I'll have another update on other road closures you need to be on the lookout for coming up in the next few minutes. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. Neighbors still trying to make sense of a bizarre and very scary situation. A home suddenly exploding into flames. Fire investigators believe it happened after a car going too fast hit a hot water heater inside the garage. Katrina Weber live where it happened not far from Braun and Loop 1604 on a street called Ferris Creek. Katrina, you mentioned earlier that this uh, woman was burned. Do we have an update on her condition this morning? Well, the last word that we had is that she's being treated at a hospital for pretty serious burns on her hands, face, and chest. Now, that woman was inside the home when uh, the fire started in the garage and then spread. This is what's left. Just look at this damage. This is what's left, this pile of wood and rubble. Now, it was a very different scene when firefighters got here around 7 last night. They found a huge ball of flames. They had to work quickly to keep the fire from spreading to other homes here on Ferris Creek. Investigators say it looks like a man was driving too fast into the garage, hit the water heater, and then the car burst into flames. His wife, again, who was inside the home, did suffer burns. Neighbors came out of their homes not sure what to expect. We thought, was there a bomb yeah. being dropped we on us? We like, didn't know. Yeah, we didn't. As he was walking out, the first explosion happened where everything shattered over here. And we, we just dug down, and then as, as I started coming up again, then there was another explosion. 
Yeah, some scary moments. Although firefighters did keep the flames from spreading, parts of the burning home collapsed, hitting and causing damage to the home next door. No one there was hurt. Firefighters also tell us that the driver of the car, the man in the car, was not hurt either. But again, his wife is in the hospital being treated for burns that she suffered uh, in this fire. Reporting live on the far northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. San Antonio Crime Stoppers are asking for your help and information behind the murder of Hyman Ira Lopez Jr. That happened earlier this month. The deadly shooting, shooting happened around 8.30 on the night of November 2nd on Culebra Road, not far from North Zarzamora on the city's west side. Anyone who has any information in this deadly shooting, they're asking you to call Crime Stoppers, and the number is on your screen. That is 210-224-STOP. Top of your morning headlines, at least one person is dead after a U.S. military Osprey aircraft crashed off the coast of southern Japan earlier today. Eight people were believed to be on board when it crashed just before 3 p.m. Japan time. Japan's Coast Guard says a patrol boat and aircraft were sent to the scene. Numerous Osprey crashes have been reported over the years, including one back in August when three U.S. Marines were killed during military training exercises in Australia. Dramatic moments in court as convicted killer Alex Murdaugh has now been sentenced for 27 years for fraud. Murdaugh, convicted earlier this year of killing his wife and son, pleaded guilty to fraud and mon money laundering. He was accused of stealing nearly $12 million from his law firm, his clients, and even his friends. Because of what you did to me, I thank God for giving me strength to get through what I went through. I trusted you with everything. I knew I was going to break. But I got to ask you, what kind of animal are you? Murda is already serving life without parole. The sentence he received yesterday will be served concurrently. That means even if he wins a new trial in the murder case, he'll be in prison for a few decades. Over the Middle East, a two-day ceasefire extension between Israel and Hamas is set to expire today. Hamas released 12 more hostages yesterday who were taken from Israel, and Israel turned over 30 imprisoned Palestinians. ABC's Justin Finch tells us if and when we see another extension. This morning, more hostages reuniting with loved ones in Israel. Hamas gunmen handing over 12 hostages taken from Israel to the Red Cross, including 17-year-old Mia Leinberg seen cradling her dog, both surviving more than 50 days held captive. Mia later seen embracing her mother, who was also kidnapped. So far, Hamas has released only one American, but the U.S. believes nine more remain in captivity. No word on where they are or who is holding them. CIA Director Bill Burns now in Qatar pushing for their release and all remaining hostages. The White House saying there's no indication Americans are being held for leverage. There's no indication that Hamas is trying to, uh, to play some sort of game here in terms of the, the Americans. We can't just assume that uh, Hamas has ready access to everybody in a moment's notice. Across Israel, families of more than 100 hostages awaiting word on their loved ones. Ifat Zeiler Paz telling ABC's Matt Gutman she's hopeful for the release of her three cousins, a mother kidnapped with her two young children. Do you know what you're going to tell her? How much I love her. I think it go, it's going to be hard to let go for a minute there. Israel releasing 30 imprisoned Palestinians Tuesday, but across the ravaged Gaza Strip, concern about a deepening humanitarian crisis. The White House says the U.S. flew in more than 54,000 pounds of medical and food aid this week, with more to follow. Once the war with Hamas resumes, the U.S. is urging Israel to prioritize civilian safety and ensure more aid gets to Gaza, where millions are now believed displaced. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Nine minutes past the hour, 52 degrees. And our coverage on Israel and Hamas continues in just a moment. After the break, images of the war overseas are all over the Internet, which can deeply affect kids. How you can start age-appropriate conversations with them about the violence that's happening right now. And outside with Lycam this morning, lower 50s out there, so cool but not necessarily cold. We do have some clouds acting as a bit of a blanket out there. Mike's going to walk us through our Wednesday forecast straight ahead.